demonstration. I'm Andrew Broussard. This time, rather than doing a watercolor painting, I'll do a oil painting for y'all. I'm going to set out a simple palette. I'm going to start with Venetian red. And let's see if you can see on the video. Yep, you can. I have some French ultramarine. I have my sap green. There's really no rhyme or reason to the pattern that I'm putting them in. It's more first come, first serve. Lamp black. And then last but not least, I have titanium white. Squeeze that right over there. Okay. So I have an 11 by 14 uh, gesso board. This one is, I believe, the Hobby Lobby brand, essentially. Um, Master's Touch. I had got them at a decent price, which was pretty nice. Actually, that's a great segue for me to say. Hey, I have a Patreon account, and I'd love for you to check it out and join. Proceeds from that will help me purchase art supplies and whatnot. Because these boards get expensive. Um, so that's why I usually definitely make one of those pleas during these videos. And I have um, two cheap tiers. And if you don't want to join, that's totally fine. I completely understand. Um, just... You know, like people watching the videos and just talking to myself while I paint. Uh, it's it's quite a great way to take, pass the time. I'm pouring out some Galakide Light. I call the oil painting videos demos as opposed to tutorials, even though I might upload it as a tutorial. I might call it that. Mainly because I am a little wary of mediums and mixtures and techniques and whatnot and I feel that watercolor you could really be loose and free with it while um, oils there are some really staunch supporters and very aggressive vehement arguments that take place anyway so I paint in a tonal style and I follow the approach of um, Dennis Sheehan and Stuart Davies and there's others that I think do that uh, this as well but those are the two that if you watch painting videos you probably know who they are and essentially they mix a goopy mixture I think Stuart Davies might use use the linseed oil mixture while um, Dennis Sheehan I think uses a different type of quick dry stuff but anyway just kind of go into it and create a a composition no really rhyme or reason just let it flow out of you and whatever comes into place I choose the smooth board because it allows me to wipe back and forth a lot easier. Um, I think it is capable with uh, possible with some quality canvases, but I can't I can't afford the, the canvases that are required to do that. They're just way out of my price range. I'm just putting this in. And we'll see what happens. I take the paper towel and move things around and soften things up, kind of get an idea of what I want to do. I use the shop rags, they seem to handle oil very well. I'm going to bring this down. I 
I don't know whether this will be mountain ranges or a far tree line with water right here. We'll see. And they could also use it to apply paint. And we're toning things up. It's been a few days since I oil painted. Um, I'm always uh, slightly limited by the uh, the setup. Watercolor is usually a lot easier, but with this oil approach, it's just so fun and so relaxing. I'll often comment, and I'll say it again in these videos that. I'll, I'll paint and I'll get to a point where I'm like, you know what, I should, I should call it done. But it's just so much fun and you just want to keep on moving things around. I am going to start another mix. This is the ultramarine and Venetian red. Ultramarine and Venetian red is a mix that I use in watercolor painting for far, far distant objects to work my way forward. I may be going to color too quickly with this one, but I am thinking about this far background. It'll all come together, don't worry if it looks all abstract right now. I'm gonna grab some more sap green. gonna be wind up getting water right in here. I use just cheap brushes. I also have um, a very soft brush, oh, two or three very soft brushes that I'll use to kind of soften at the end, but I haven't used those in a while. I haven't really painted clouds and whatnot. That's something I've gotten from uh, the videos of uh, Stuart Davies. I mixed in a little lamp black just because I'm kind of moving stuff around. I'm going to soften it all up in a moment. I'm just getting my ideas out of yours.
so. Well, gotta keep this stamina going. We'd like to try to get a watercolor in tonight too. I also have two fountain pens I need to repair. I had started with them last night, but there was just so much um, dried ink in them. I like old vintage fountain pens. You know, a lot of people say, oh, um, once this quarantine's over, I'm going to go to the restaurant. I'm going to go do this, that. I want to go antiquing. I want to go find stuff. I wanna, um, I'd like to find a wooden writing, writing desk. I don't think I have a room in the house. I rent a house right now, so I don't think we have room in this. For a writing desk, but that'd be so nice. Also, uh, looking forward to hopefully being able to work out again. I don't know when they'll allow us to go to the back of the weight room at work in the gym. I gotta start training the kids for to be stage champions in 2021 since they missed their opportunity this year they had won the past three years and they were, the boys were slated to, to win first but a week before state everything shut down I've been doing a little bit of yoga around the house though so no weight lifting, just a little, you know, stretching, body weight squats, things like that. So hopefully, you all see how we're building up these tonal values. Uh, I kind of built up shapes, and it lets me see what's taking place, and then, then I'll start building up my um, my colors and my darks but the darks will stay in the uh, tonalism realm of things uh, the colors like the browns and greens and purples I'm just putting this in and building up tones in the sky. I'm going to wipe it out in a moment. Looking at how the reflections are going to wind up being. I'm also... I just, I'd put those, that purple in here, but it kind of wiped out. And I think we might avoid that purple. I'm going to soften this up. then wipe out camera flipped dang it I'm sorry guys I hope it did it again I don't know how long it had flipped for I'm really sorry about that I 
like I said, I, I live stream on here, and um, it's probably the shaking, the aggressiveness with this. So I don't know how long it flipped for. Um, not sure what I can do to correct it. I might have to do a whole photo editor. Editor. That's a bummer, because that that seems to take forever. For a computer to process or yeah it's the shaking that's doing it let's see wonder why yep every time let's see if i can set this back some not good it's a learning experience This is a uh, most pure black right here. Just darkening this up. I want. a dark shadow too here in the water. So I'm gonna have to create some sort of element above it. I'm gonna soften it and then I'll put it in again with more texture. Let's see. I'm going to need more medium. This paper towel is gunked up. That's good. Like I said, you can use the towel itself to start putting stuff in. Mix that purple again. I think I'll wind up putting storm clouds in. Which works because it's raining. I'm just mixing it right into that purple mix. Um, Might wipe back a little white or paint in some white in the spot.
think I just have black on both brushes. That's fine. The nice thing about this board, which some people look at as a negative, is that you can use the bristled brush to lift the paint. So you just gotta be careful because it'll be textured and it'll, it'll lift it, but it really does add a cool textured effect. Really need to put in a, some paint down in here just to kind of work the whole thing at once. Just kind of contouring, creating, and just putting pigment in, kind of getting an idea. I do have a lot of foreground. Oh, thank you. So, once again, for those out there, I live stream these and people come into the chat and, and talk. Um, the person that was in the chat for my sketching from Baldini of a figure portrait um, is now back again, and this is uh, oil painting. So here, with my oil painting approach, and I gotta apologize, um, the camera, keeps on wanting to to flip on me so I'm using my cell phone so it's directed one way and I'm kind of shaking the table and it's, it's moving it so to kind of catch you up to speed I take a limited palette this is just black sap green Venetian red um, white ultramarine I think that's you know. and I mix the sap green and the Venetian red together to get a brown. And this is a technique that 
I learned from two contemporary oil painting tonalist artists. And your mixture kind of gives you that brown effect. And it's like the underpainting of a um, master painting called a uh, grisalia, I believe is the term. Now, we take those and we create tones. So it's tonalism. Um, and then we have like just a little bit of black and um, white to kind of just change things around. And it's a lot of uh, putting the paint in. And this is a smooth board, 11 by 14. And it lets me put it in and then it lets me change the texture. That's something I haven't done in this video yet, in this demo. Well, we'll do it now in a moment. I'm just putting paint in and softening up. I grab a fresh paper towel to show you. Where's my garbage bag? There it is. I don't have any Q-tips in here. Well, I do. They're a few feet away. And they don't work the best for me with this. But if you roll the end of the paper towel, you can lift and you start pulling out tree trunks. And very easily, you can get the illusion of spending a lot of time on uh, tree trunks. And if you don't like it, you just go back and forth with it. You then layer back over it and you start grounding the tree. Uh, since it's smooth, I can dig in and get these texture for grass. And then I can soften right back up. And I could erase it if I want. That's the cool thing about oil painting. It's very easy to wipe around. I'm going to roll this up, and I can come right back in. And here, I'm going to put all these guys in, and if I want to bring the reflection down, I can. And then I can go up on top. Let's just grab a dark just to exaggerate it. And we can start putting in the foliage and create the dimensional effect, the layering. And I find that's really important with, um, with trees, forests, groups like that. You could spend a lot of time painting a tree group and then a lot of the stuff you wind up doing can get lost, but I think it helps create the illusion in your own personal mind of what you're doing. Just darkening this back up in here. And I can go between them. And then eventually you get to the point where you just say, okay, I don't want to soften it as much, or I want it more textured, or this is my final layer. I'll leave this area for a bit. Let's go to another spot. The other day I did the painting of um, the seafood restaurant. And I spent about an hour on it. And it was a local scene, and I posted it online, and it sold within uh, two hours of me posting it because it was a local scene. So if you if you do art and all that, you want to do local things. Uh, those people really like that, and I I, t I told the lady how. I had painted it that morning when I handed it off to her and she looked at me in surprise. And then my friend Marlon always tells me, oh, don't tell people how long you take to paint. Or, uh, you want to be a professional artist, don't, don't tell people how long you take to paint. And 
Miss Teller, it's kind of a point of pride, and it's not so much a pride, it's also a communication between artists saying, um, you know, what techniques we used and how we approached it. Like, I will freely share any and all knowledge, I'm not saying that I have a lot, about art that I have. Because I want other people to enjoy it as well. Actually, went and dropped off some canvas to my coworker today. She um, she's uh, when I have a class that has. I teach you know general population, but some classes will have some special ed students in it, and um, so she's my inclusion teacher, and she'll sit in in the morning classes and then she has them in the afternoon for uh you know kind of going over it in more detail so a fantastic woman and i consider her like like a sister and um she she lives alone so she's been by herself most of this time and she was like oh uh my mom gave me some canvases that she had printed on can I, can I paint on them? Can I get gesso? Can I do this, that, and the other thing? And I was like, well, maybe try sanding it to get the print off, and then you could paint over it after you gesso it, if there's a gesso layer already. But I was like, screw it. Then I went and um, dropped off some canvases to her. I think that really made her day, made her week. So hopefully she's painting right now. She was showing me what she got her um her girlfriend for uh for Mother's Day. And it was really sweet, it was a really really pretty necklace. So I'm doing another layer of trees. I could have spent a lot more time in that background. And um in the future I would just to draw out the process and have fun with it. It's almost like finger painting, the approach that I use. And I watercolor so much that I have one style, I <laughs> have different styles of watercolor that I do and I adopt this over to watercolor for one of them and it's um it's fun the bases are a little wide on these trees down here in louisiana we have um cypress trees cypress swamps they're very thick bases so if they wind up staying thick at the end say that they're cypress trees but um, cypress roots, they grow up around the object itself. If I put them in, hopefully people from the area, from Louisiana, would read them as cypress trees. But I don't know if other people would be able to do that. We have been getting a lot of rain the past few days, which is good because this place me and my buddy go to, each half a lie basin for um, bow fishing. And last year we had a lot of rain and it was flooded back there, like flooded, flooded um, water up on the levee, flooded, not over the levee, but up on it. And we were able to to take the boat over the levee and um, like like ride over the the flooded parts on the boat and there's a lot of fish sitting in the grass there and we, we bow fish where we you know take bow and arrow and, and and fish with bows and arrows which is very fun hopefully y'all don't think I'm barbaric 
doing that. I do an underhang of trees. I'm gonna darken this up so this is almost black. It's really popping forward. This is going to get dark down in here. We do a little texturing. So I use my phone to film and you know, I was just checking to see how it looked to make sure the camera didn't flip. I, so I had a message from my mom and she had sent me, I didn't get a chance to read it because I was just looking at it just now. That was me sighing. Uh, it says large, police call to large crowd outside a restaurant. Um, did I grab white paint? Oh, yeah, because I have it that close. Yeah. Large crowd, uh, police call to a large crowd outside of a restaurant. Unfortunately, and for those that are watching this at a later date, um, this is the middle of a pandemic, and um, there is you know, a lot of different things going on, different governments doing different things, you know, people closing down all business, people having just business that they consider essential, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a lot of people, different people with a lot of different viewpoints on it. And it's um, a big point of contention and a lot of um, people's emotions are running very high. And there's a lot of arguments about what the government can and cannot do and a lot of arguments about um, you know, if people can take the risks for themselves or, or not, things like that. Uh, anyway, so that's for people watching this a future, future date. <laughs> now you've caught up to speed, but chances are you live through it and you know what I'm, exactly what I'm talking about. Anywho, so my mom had sent me a link saying that cops were called to a large crowd outside of a restaurant because People, they're, all, they're all supposed to limit dining inside restaurants right now to 25% capacity, I believe is what the news says in our area. So they're serving people outside the restaurants. And, um, and like I said, regardless how you guys feel about it, they're, they're, it's essentially turning into an outdoor party outside of restaurants. And um, it's... Get a little, it's, it's weird. It's just uh, such a weird time period. And I, I think I talked about that in a painting a, a few weeks ago. Was It might have been an oil painting. Oil paintings get very pensive. Um, perhaps because it's the tonalism, the moody style. Um, it's so weird what, what's, what's going on and um, how that's affecting I think art and whatnot and and what we're doing. Oh, that is that brush with the stuff from the sky in it. I really have neglected the sky quite a bit and most of this is just a combination of black, green, and blue. Really no white. The white is just the white back. 
I have the rigger brush here. I guess you call it. I don't know. It's a round, round brush, a little, I guess, for dots. I'm not good at using it for oil painting. When I place an order for more paper, which I, I need to do, I'll take a look at the oil painting brushes, see if they have some sort of rigger that I can use. I soften that too much right there. Yeah, I need to start going dark, dark now. Pull out another tree. I'll switch paper towels again. This is black. use this to pull up the grass like I mentioned earlier I love painting on these boards. Can you imagine being able to do this for a living? Just being able to paint every day for the rest of your life. I can't imagine how much people would have to sell paintings for to be self-sufficient. I think they would have to give a lot of classes or write books. Or maybe be a college professor. College professors, I don't think, get paid much. I think they get paid less than a public school teacher. switch this paper towel out. That's a lot of medium. So we need more black. Let's put the black into the spot. We get some more sap green. Well, I may think about putting a little bit of yellow ochre or raw sienna on this. 
We'll see. stand up. I got a little bit of a glare on my table. That's the only way I could film though. I feel like we have a path forming here. So let me I can bring up now this is drastic, but let's bring up a trunk. do so this is called this is going up being called um I think this is like a circle composition o shape composition because I'm gonna wind up framing it between trees on either side I had no desire to do that originally it just happened. Soften this up. Red. Man. Pull out a little bit on this. Get green, sap green. It's a little too much. <laughs> I need to 
make this stand out more from the background. So that's where texture, tonal value, color value, all that stuff really starts coming into play. throw this paper towel away. Oh, one fun thing, a card, credit card, we could scrape out rocks. We're gonna have to come in and fix them up because that's just too, Do this to kind of give the effect of grass and flowers. Things get serious and pain when I start standing up. <laughs> I'm gonna close off this path, I think. At least close off the opening a little bit, the shadow. Um, I guess we could play around with white at this point. to buy a uh, rest for my hand. Uh, 
don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want the lights. Maybe just put it in, soften it up. I could use it. Down here. What if we mix the brown? We'll experiment here. Fresh green. So here. Lighten it up. dark Stand up and take the whole thing in. I think we'll call it at that. I hope you all enjoyed and I think I'm done painting for tonight so come back tomorrow with some more art videos and art demos. Hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye bye.